name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And Greetings to you all gathered here in this cathedral on this glorious day that the Lord has made, a day where we come together as church to celebrate the solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. But the smiles I'll see on your faces is for also another very good reason as to why you're gathered here. We rejoice as uh, with, the, with the Diocese of Pembroke as we come together for the Episcopal ordination of Bishop-elect uh, Michael Brell. J'aimerais souligner aujourd'hui la présence de tous les, d'abord les cardinaux qui sont avec nous, le cardinal Lacroix, archevêque de Québec, primat de l'Église au Canada, ainsi que le cardinal Tobin, qui est un confrère de l'évêque élu Michael Brell, des, des Rédemptoristes. Bienvenue à vous deux. Merci de votre présence. I'd like to also acknowledge the presence of all the, your graces, your eminences, your, your excellencies, all the priests, the religious, and all of you, dear brothers and sisters. Your presence here is very important as we celebrate this awesome and glorious day. Please be seated. Most Reverend Father, the Church of Pembroke asks you to ordain this priest, Michael, to the responsibility of the episcopate. Have you a mandate from the ap Apostolic See? We have. Let it be read. Francis, Bishop, Servant of the Servants of God, to our beloved son Michael Braille, member of the Congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer, and until now Provincial Superior of the Canadian Province, Bishop-elect of Pembroke, greeting and blessing. We hold the lamp of faith and law by which we also, having been made light, are enlightened out of darkness, concerning which the psalmist relates, your commandment is a lamp for my feet and a light for my paths, never to be hidden by us but for the salvation of many, always to be set up in the church as on a lampstand. In order that we ourselves may be able to enjoy the light of every truth and that all believers may be illumined by it, we attentively watch over the circumstances of the flock of Pembroke concerned for the spiritual progress of this community, which following the transfer of our venerable brother Guy de Rocher to the Metropolitan Archdiocese of Moncton, is in need of a moderator of diocesan life. Therefore, we thought of you, beloved brother, whose human and priestly talents we esteem, as well as your proven skill in managing affairs, which seem to us a necessity for taking up these duties of pastoral office. Following the counsel, therefore, of the Dicastery of Bishops, by the fullness of our apostolic authority, we establish you, Bishop of Pembroke, with the due rights granted and the corresponding obligations imposed which are attached to this office. You will be able to receive Episcopal ordination outside of the Eternal City with the liturgical norms observed from a Catholic bishop whom you will choose, having first made according to the norms of ecclesiastical law, the profession of faith 
and the oath of fidelity to us and our successors. We desire that you would inform the clergy and the people of this ecclesial community of this, our decree, whom we exhort with all our heart should hold you as its most honored teacher and guide. With the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Columkill, priest and abbot, as intercessors, may you feed this flock, beloved brother, and diligently teach them the wisdom of the cross so that with you as guide they may be fed with the richest nourishment of the evangelical word and strengthened by your perennial example. They may rejoice to seek the most holy redeemer in all things and may be found the temple of his glory. Given in Rome at the Lateran on the 11th day of the month of June on the memorial of St. Barnabas Apostle, in the 2024th year of our Lord, the 12th of our pontificate, Francis. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
prions. Dieu éternel et tout-puissant, sois élevé jusqu'à la gloire du ciel dans son âme et son corps. Marie, la Vierge Immaculée, la Mère de ton Fils, fais que, toujours tendu vers les réalités d'en haut, nous obtenions de partager sa gloire. Par Jésus-Christ, ton Fils, notre Seigneur, qui vit et règne avec toi dans l'unité du Saint-Esprit, Dieu pour les siècles des siècles. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant was seen within his temple. A great portent appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pangs, in the agony of giving birth. Then another portent appeared in heaven a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman who was about to bear a child so that he might devour her child as soon as it was born. And she gave birth to a son, a male child, who is to rule all nations with a rod of iron. But her child was snatched away and taken to God and to his throne, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God so that there she can be nourished for 1,260 days. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven proclaiming, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. The word of the Lord. people 
Jesus praise you from age to age. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a man. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ but each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Le Seigneur soit avec vous. Et avec Évangile de Jésus-Christ selon Saint Luc. Gloire à En ce jour-là, Marie se mit en route et se rendit avec empressement vers la région montagneuse dans une ville de Judée. Elle entra dans la maison de Zacharie et salua Élisabeth. Or, quand Élisabeth entendit la salutation de Marie, l'enfant tressaillit en elle. Alors, Élisabeth fut remplie d'Esprit Saint et s'écria d'une voix forte, « Tu es bénie entre toutes les femmes, et le fruit de tes entrailles est béni. D'où m'est-il donné que la mère de mon Seigneur vienne jusqu'à moi? Car lorsque tes paroles de salutation sont parvenues à mes oreilles, l'enfant a tressailli d'allégresse en moi. » Heureuse celle qui a cru à l'accomplissement des paroles qui lui furent dites de la part du Seigneur. 
Marie dit alors, « Mon âme exalte le Seigneur, exulte mon esprit en Dieu, mon Sauveur. » Il s'est penché sur son humble servante, « Désormais, tous les âges me diront bienheureuse. Le Puissant fit pour moi des merveilles. Saint est son nom. Sa miséricorde s'étend d'âge en âge sur ceux qui le craignent. Déployant la force de son bras, il disperse les superbes. Il renverse les puissants de leur trône. Il, a, il élève les humbles. Il comble de bien les affamés. Renvoie les, les riches les mains vides. Il relève Israël, son serviteur. Il se souvient de son amour, de la promesse faite à nos pères en faveur d'Abraham et sa descendance à jamais. Marie resta avec Élisabeth environ trois mois, puis elle s'en retourna chez elle. Acclamons la parole de Dieu. Louange à toi, Seigneur Jésus. Today we see Mother Mary going back into heaven, body and soul. When we look at Jesus when he ascended 
to heaven. We can just imagine how the apostles and the disciples felt when they saw him ascending into heaven. Perhaps thinking, oh no, we're left all alone. What will we do? And when we see Mother Mary going into heaven now, we may be tempted to think, to harbor the same thoughts. Oh no, Mother Mary is now leaving us. She's going into heaven. She will not be close to us anymore. But we all know that when Jesus went back into heaven, it was so that he could send the Holy Spirit into the hearts of the believers, of the pastors and of the believers, so that they would not be afraid anymore to proclaim the word of God. And we know that Jesus wanted to send his Holy Spirit so he could be present to us in a supernatural way, not only to a few of his disciples and apostles, but to all of us throughout the generations till the end of the world. I will be with you till the end of times. It's a promise that Jesus gave us. And the same thing happens when we see Mother Mary going into heaven. This is like a consecration of Mother Mary in a way because she is now the immaculate conception. She who was faithful all her life, committed to God with faith and love, never even sinning, one venial sin because she was so into God and now because Jesus has given us his blessed mother to become the mother of all mankind well she receives a special privilege and now she can now intercede and be present to all of us so the feast of the assumption is not is something that should be joyful for all of us knowing Mother Mary is going into heaven now. She can be present to all of us. She listens to your prayers, your personal prayers, and she intercedes. She intercedes all the time, like a mother does. And when her children sin and come to her and say, Mom, please talk to Dad. Talk to dad. What does mom do? Well, we all know what moms do, right? Dear, please be very lean on your child. Your child regrets the sin. And I will teach your, our child how to become a better person and not to disobey anymore. And then God looks at the child. God looks at mom. And then justice just disappears, evaporates. Now, dad looks with a smile because mom interceded. And that's what Mother Mary does. On the Feast of the Assumption, Mary teaches us many things. The first thing that we see when she hastens to go to visit her old cousin Elizabeth, that's what Mary does. She hastens to you when you ask her a special favor. She comes down from heaven and she is present and interceding for the salvation of your soul so that you can be present to God forever and ever in heaven one day. She continually intercedes and we call her the mother of mercy. So what does she teach us today? Firstly, that we need to have faith in God's love we need to have faith in God's promises. He promised us eternal life. It's a gift, the most beautiful gift of all times. What better gift is there than eternal life? Isn't that what our epoch is trying to do today, to try to live forever with all special products and whatnot so that you'll be healthy longer and live, live longer? Well, Mary is saying, if you want to live longer, Come back to God. Have faith in his love and in his promises. That's what she teaches us today in a special way, especially through the beautiful canticle of the Magnificat. Magnificat means to magnify the Lord, 
To magnify him means that the more you, you let God come into your heart, the more you can magnify him and make him great again. And I know that Cardinal Tobin is here, and I don't want to mock the politics of the Americans, but make America great again, you know? <laughs> so we are to make God great again. This is what Mary is telling us today. Make God great again if you want to live for eternity. So she teaches us faith and in God's love and in his promises. Yes, she teaches us. Mary also teaches us how to listen to the word of God, to be present to the word of God. Because you notice that in the beautiful canticle of the Magnificat, Mary knows a lot about the Old Testament. Sure enough, all the Magnificat is taken partly from the Old Testament. She knows the Word of God. She meditates the Word of God. And the book, the Apocrypha writings also relate to us that Mary was consecrated in the temple of Jerusalem when she was very, very young. In fact, we say she was three years old in the Apocrypha writing when she was consecrated by good Saint Anne and Saint Joachim in the temple of Jerusalem. So she heard the word of God, but she didn't just listen to it. She teaches us how to listen to the word of God by contemplating that word, by meditating that word. So she didn't just listen. And she's teaching us today, when you pray, don't just read the Bible, contemplate it, meditate on it, so that the word of God comes into your heart. As St. Augustine would say, even before conceiving the Lord in her womb, Mary conceived the Lord in her soul. She already conceived the Lord in her soul. Mary meditates on the word of God. So she's teaching us how to pray. On the Feast of the Assumption, because of the victory over sin and death, because of her purity of body, spirit, and soul, Mary is teaching us, if you want the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God to be in your heart, you must meditate the word of God. Don't just read it. Meditate on it. She's telling you, pray, my children. Pray every day. Take some time, and you'll make God great again. Because if God is not great, we are not great. If God is not in our hearts, then what is going to happen to this world? And as we look at today's world, we say, where are we going? Where are we heading for? Oh, no, the church is going to die. We've seen that very often in our history and not too far away from us with all the scandals and the scorning that the church has received from all other types of faith or even people with no faith. They look at us and they say, the church is going to die. But today the first reading tells us, no, it's not going to happen. Why? There is this woman and we all know who that woman is, right? There is this woman, clothed with the sun, the glory of God. And she has her divine son holding him there. And what is happening there in this book of Revelation, they tell us that there's a dragon that's after her. A dragon represents Satan and all the evil. And that the evil that even us, men and women, also encounter in our lives. Well, there's the dragon, and then we're saying, oh, today is the feast of the triumph of Mary over sin and death. As Jesus ascended into heaven, and as Mary now has ascended into heaven, they are not farther away, but where are they? Because look at our world. Look where we're going. What's going to happen? The church is going to die, many people say, and some are happy saying that. At last, we can do what we want. This is the freedom that we expect, that we think is the best thing for us, to be free. And that was the temptation of Adam and Eve. You will be free from the dominion of God. You'll be able to do whatever you want. But sadly, 
Adam and Eve realize that they suddenly stopped magnifying the Lord when they did that. God was not great anymore in their hearts. And they were not great because of that. So when we magnify the Lord, this is what Mary teaches us in our prayer to contemplate the Word of God so that the Word, the Spirit of God comes into us and teaches us the ways of God and how to be united in His will. That's what Mary teaches us today in a special way. What else does Mary teach us today? Through the Feast of the Assumption. Mary teaches us the ways of mercy of God. Blessed is the Lord of mercy who takes care of those who fear him, she adds, in the Magnificat, who fear him. What does that mean? Is this to be afraid of God? This is a spiritual fear we're talking about, my friends. It's not our typical fear of having an accident or dying. This is the fear of God. It means a total great respect for the almightiness and the almighty love of God and his mercy. A total respect for that. And if we don't do that, if we don't fear the Lord in this fashion, then we'll do whatever we want. We'll be trying to do our will instead of God's will. And so God won't be great again and we won't be great anymore. We will lose our identity and we will lose immortal life. I mean, that's why Mary, who is a mother and a loving mother, does not want to lose any of her children. And that's why she's saying to us today, please repent from your sins. Have the fear of the Lord in you. And the reason your world today is going into a pit is because they do not fear the Lord. They don't have any repentance. They don't even acknowledge that they have sins in their lives. And this, a few years back when Cardinal Ouellette was in Quebec many years ago, said, what we need in Quebec, he said, but I will add to the world, what we need is sinners. We don't have any sinners anymore. We don't need God. We don't have his word in us. We don't understand what's happening. And we think we're all alone. And we sin. And we don't even regret our sins. Mary is saying to us today, magnify the Lord through your repentance also. Not just in faith, in his promises, and in his love. Not just to, through prayer, through meditating, but also please, Mary is saying, go to the sacrament of mercy because I am the mother of mercy she is telling us how to become a child of God again to magnify him is to magnify you and all her offspring that is the message I think mother Mary wants to give to us today plus as I said she intercedes all the time for us she's very very close to you you know very present and so, Bishop Michael, as I was reflecting on the homily and thinking of you, the new, new pastor here in Pembroke, I was saying, what a grace Pembroke is receiving right now. Do you realize that? What a grace you're receiving. I mean, he's been our Father General like Cardinal Tobin was also many years ago. But He's been across all the communities of redemptress communities all through the world, so he knows what's going on, what's happening in many parts of the world. But as a redemptress, he wants to be a missionary priest and bishop now. A missionary priest, a missionary bishop. What does that mean? As you know, since Vatican II, we are trying to become more missionary because this is the charism of a true shepherd. According to the heart of Jesus, who follows the ways of Jesus, who doesn't just say, I'm going to feed the people to go to church. No, I am sure of this, because I know Bishop Michael, I've known him since we were, well, not that high, but you know, a little higher. We've known each other for a long time, and his heart 
is the heart of a missionary. He will not just be content to serving the people who come to church, but he will want to reach out to the people who don't go to church. Am I right, Bishop Michael? So he can't lie. <laughs> He's a bishop now. Bishops never lie, right? <laughs> we still have the sacrament, you know. You can give me a call and I'll come down. My dear friends, you are receiving a beautiful, beautiful grace today. That's why not only are we joyful because of the Feast of the Assumption, but we are joyful because the church is giving you a new servant. Someone who will serve you with love. Who will be modeling his life and who has already been modeling his life through the model of Mary, the mother of mercy. Wow. That gives me so much hope, not just for Pembroke, because it's for the whole church. It's a gift that God does when he ordains a bishop, when he ordains a priest, when he ordains a deacon. It's a gift for you. We are a gift to you, here to serve you with love and with mercy, like Mother Mary does, so that we can become like the Mother of God. Because, you know what? We also conceive the Lord in our soul as a priest and as a bishop. We conceive him like Mother Mary does. And that's why we become like a mother to you. Not just a father. Everybody's been calling us a father, but we're also a mother. We teach you the ways of God, how to God's love, his promises. We teach you how to pray like Mother Mary does. And we teach you how to repent from your sins by our preaching, by our way of life, by giving you the sacraments of confession in a special way. We teach you how to become like Mother Mary, who is so overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit that whatever she does, whatever she says, is always done according to God's will. So rejoice today. You have a bishop, a new bishop, who is rejoicing and becoming a model of your mother Mary, who is so close and present to all of you. Amen. I, je voudrais dire quelques mots en français. Ça rallonge un petit peu, mais seulement quelques mots. Vous avez compris la plupart de vous, je sais que vous comprenez bien euh, l'anglais, la plupart. Mais rappelez-vous qu'aujourd'hui, cette fête, c'est la fête de toute l'Église qui nous rappelle que Marie, à l'exemple de son fils, a remporté la victoire sur le péché et sur la mort. Elle est restée fidèle jusqu'au bout. Quelle grâce, quelle grâce. Votre nouvel évêque sera certainement, tel que je le connais depuis des années, un évêque missionnaire, un évêque selon le cœur de Dieu qui va se contenter non pas seulement d'entretenir, je dirais, les gens qui viennent à l'église par les sacrements, mais aussi qui vont faire des efforts extraordinaires pour rejoindre les gens qui ne vont pas à l'église, pour les ramener au bercail. C'est sa passion, et c'est la passion qu'on devrait tous avoir. Pas seulement les pasteurs, mais chacun de vous. Une passion pour dire, j'ai la mission, comme Marie a cette mission aussi, d'aller rejoindre les brebis qui ne sont plus dans le bercail aussi. Je ne me contenterai pas seulement d'avoir des amis qui croient, mais je me rendrai plus proche des gens qui ne vont pas à l'église. C'est l'esprit missionnaire, c'est de cet évêque que vous recevez comme grâce de Dieu. Quelle belle grâce vous recevez à Pembroke. J'en suis jaloux! <rire> Il fait tellement plaisir de vous revoir aussi, plusieurs parmi vous, que j'ai connu en seulement trois ans seulement, mais quelle grâce de voir la, votre foi en Dieu, votre foi aussi dans la mère de Dieu qui est si proche de chacun et chacune de nous. I will end now with a, just a little story. A few minutes. This really happened. And perhaps, I don't know if Cardinal Lacroix remembers that, but maybe 15, 20 years ago, I'm not sure, but in Quebec, on the uh, Autoroute de la Capitale, which is the main, one of the main arteries where people travel on, 
to, to go across the city and other places. There was a major accident. Three young men, three young men, about 18 years old, had a major car accident on the Autoroute de la Capitale. Two of them were already dead when the policeman showed up. He got there just a bit before the ambulance arrived and he saw this other young man who was ejected out of the car because he wasn't strapped in the back and came out through the window but was lying on the ground and was bleeding to death. And so the policeman saw him and did not want to, you know, put him into a worse position, but he was talking to him and says, hang on, the ambulance is coming, young man, hang on. She, you'll be okay soon. But the young man knew he was dying. And all he could say in front of the policeman is, where is she? Where is she? And the policeman said, where's who? He says, where is Mary, Mother Mary? The policeman, who was a Catholic but never went to church practically, who did not pray because, you know, that's, that's what we're at right now in many cases. So he said to him, I don't know where she is. And the young man was weeping as he, was, he knew he was dying. The policeman couldn't comfort him and all of a sudden the young man said, oh, and he smiled. And he died in the arms of the policeman. And the policeman, when he saw his face shining like that, with a smile on his face as he's dying, he said, this young man saw Mother Mary. Something changed in his whole attitude in his face. He went, oh, and he died in the arms of the policeman. The policeman was so stricken by what he saw, he came back to this police station and he said to his confreres, he says, guys, I've seen someone who saw the Blessed Mother of God. And they all looked at him and they started laughing and scorning him, mocking him. Oh boy, you better take a break. The policeman said, you don't believe me? And everybody started laughing when he told them the story of this young man. So he says, well, do you know what I'm going to do now? If you guys don't believe me, I'll go to places where they will believe me. And that's how I heard about the story. He came into religious communities and told us what he had seen. That's how convinced he was that this young man saw the Blessed Mother. And so I just end this homily by saying, Mother Mary is with us at the hour of your death. Not just when you're born, not just sometimes through your life. She's always there. She will always be with you because she's the mother of mercy. And at the hour of your death, if you pray, like the young man told the policeman, he says, if I said my Our Father, three Hail Marys, and glory to the Father every night with all my heart, God, Mother Mary would show up. That's what my mom told me. And that's why I kept faithfulness in that prayer. And that's why the young man received this special favor, you see. At the hour of our death, Mary appeases us. She's the queen of peace. And she says, do not worry. I will help you cross this road here. Where you will enter into a new world that you can't even imagine. A beautiful world where God will open up his motherly arms and embrace you and kiss you all over like a mom does when she has a child. And he will say, at last you are with me for all eternity. Amen.
C'est la règle très ancienne de l'Église, qu'en présence du peuple, il soit demandé à celui qui va devenir évêque qu'il s'engage à maintenir la foi et à s'acquitter des devoirs de sa charge. Frères bien-aimés, acceptez-vous la charge que nous ont confiée les apôtres et que nous allons vous transmettre par l'imposition des mains. Oui, je... Voulez-vous annoncer l'Évangile du Christ avec fidélité et sans relâche? Oui, je... Voulez-vous garder dans sa pureté et son intégrité le dépôt de la foi selon la tradition reçue des apôtres, toujours et partout tenue dans l'Église? Do you resolve to build up the body of Christ, his church, and to remain in her unity with the order of bishops under the authority of the successor of the blessed apostle Peter? I am. Do you resolve to render obedience faithfully to the successor of the blessed apostle Peter? I do. Do you resolve as a devoted father to encourage the holy people of God and to guide them in the way of salvation together with the priests and deacons, your fellow ministers. I do. do you resolve for the sake of the Lord's name to show yourself welcoming and merciful to the poor, to strangers, and to all those in need? I do. do you resolve as a good shepherd to seek out the sheep who stray and to gather them into the Lord's fold? I do. do you resolve to pray without ceasing to Almighty God for his holy people and to carry out the office of high priest without reproach? I do with the help of God. So may God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Avec tous les saints, prions Dieu qui a choisi cet élu dans sa bonté et pour le bien de son Église qui lui donne l'abondance de sa grâce.
Accueille, Seigneur, les supplications de ton Église pour celui à qui nous allons imposer les mains. Répands sur lui ta bénédiction toute puissante par Jésus le Christ notre Seigneur.
God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, who dwell on high and look upon the lowly, who know all things before they come to be. It is you who established order in your church through your gracious word, who from the beginning predestined the righteous people born of Abraham, who instituted rulers and priests and did not leave your sanctuary without ministry, who from the beginning of the world have been pleased to be glorified in those you have chosen. Now pour forth upon the chosen one the power that is from you, the governing spirit whom you gave to your beloved son, Jesus Christ, and whom he gave to the holy apostles, who established the church in each place as your sanctuary, to the glory and unfailing praise of your name. Grant, O Father, knower of all hearts, that this, your servant whom you have chosen for the episcopate, may nourish your holy flock and may without reproach exercise before you the high priesthood, serving you night and day, that he may unceasingly cause your face to shine upon us and offer the gifts of your holy church. Grant that by the strength of the spirit of the high priesthood, he may have authority to forgive sins according to your command, that he may apportion offices according to your precept and loosen every bond according to the authority you gave the apostles. May he be pleasing to you in meekness and purity of heart, offering a sweet fragrance to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom glory and power and honor are yours, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, both now and forever and ever. Dieu vous a lui-même associé au Christ souverain prêtre, qu'il vous pénètre de sa grâce comme d'une onction spirituelle et rende fécond votre ministère par la bénédiction de l'Esprit-Saint. Recevez l'Évangile, prêchez la parole de Dieu avec une grande patience et le souci d'instruire. Receive this ring 
the seal of fidelity and adorned with the undefiled faith, preserve unblemished the bride of God, the Holy Church. Receive the mitre. And let the splendor of holiness shine in you so that when the chief shepherd appears, you may merit to receive an unfading crown of glory. Receive the crozier, the sign of the pastoral office, and keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as bishop to govern the Church of God.
please stand, and together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this, our sacrifice, may become acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise of the glory of his name, for our good and of all his holy Que mon fer croix, Seigneur, l'offrande que nous te présentons avec ferveur. Et tandis qu'intercède pour nous la bienheureuse Vierge Marie élevée au ciel, que nos cœurs, plus lents de charité, aspirent toujours à monter vers toi. Par le Christ, notre Seigneur. Amen. Le Seigneur soit avec vous. Et avec votre esprit. Il vaut notre cœur. Rendons grâce au Seigneur, notre Dieu. Cela est juste et bon. Vraiment, il est juste et bon pour ta gloire et notre salut, de t'offrir notre action de grâce toujours et en tout lieu, Seigneur, Père très saint, Dieu éternel et tout puissant, par le Christ, notre Seigneur. Aujourd'hui, la Vierge Marie, la Mère de Dieu, est élevée au ciel. Elle est le commencement et l'image de ce que deviendra ton Église en sa plénitude. Elle est signe d'espérance et source de réconfort pour ton peuple en un chemin. Ainsi, tu n'as pas voulu qu'elle connaisse la corruption du tombeau, elle qui a porté dans sa chair ton propre Fils et mis au monde d'une manière incomparable l'auteur de la vie. C'est pourquoi, unissant nos voix à celles des anges, nous te louons dans la joie en proclamant. through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant Michael, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make also, which we make to you also for me, your unworthy servant, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of bishops, and in your mercy keep safe your gifts in me, so that what I have received by divine commission I may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O God, we pray. Bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering 
in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the very day before he was to suffer, he take bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands and once more giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink of it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension to heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the trust, sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation in the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Et nous, pécheurs, tes serviteurs, qui mettons notre espérance en ta miséricorde inépuisable, admets-nous dans la communauté des saints apôtres et martyrs, avec Jean-Baptiste, Étienne, Matthias et Barnabé, Ignace, Alexandre, Marcelin et Pierre, Félicité perpétue, Agathe, Lucie, Agnès, Cécile, Anastasie et tous les saints. Nous t'en prions, accueille-nous dans leur propre compagnie, sans nous juger sur le mérite, mais en accordant largement ton pardon par le Christ, notre Seigneur. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Jesus now. Seigneur Jésus-Christ, toi dit à tes apôtres, je vous laisse la paix, je vous donne ma paix. Ne regarde pas nos péchés, mais la foi de ton Église, pour que ta volonté s'accomplisse. Donne-lui toujours cette paix et conduis-la vers l'unité parfaite. Toi qui vis et règnes pour les siècles des siècles. Amen. Que la paix du Seigneur soit toujours avec vous. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
side. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ.
Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Dear Cardinal Lacroix, dear Cardinal Tobin, dear Archbishops and Bishops here present, dear Bishop Brel, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on behalf of the Apostolic Nuncio, who is united with us in prayer today, I have the honor of communicating the pastoral solicitude and affection of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, to the Church of Pembroke. As on this beautiful solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we witness the Episcopal ordination of a faithful and devoted son of St. Alphonsus Liguri as the 10th Bishop of this diocese. Je tiens tout d'abord à remercier Monsieur l'Abbé Holy pour la générosité et le dévouement dont il a fait preuve dans son rôle d'administrateur diocésain, ainsi que pour le travail qu'il a accompli ces derniers mois en vue d'aider Monseigneur Brel à prendre sa charge de ses nouvelles missions. I would like to thank you, dear Bishop Brell, for accepting this appointment of the Holy Father, for the willingness to take up the office of Bishop and to become the Chief Shepherd of the Flock of Christ, now entrusted to your care. En plus du zèle missionnaire, que vous avez acquis de votre communauté de rédemptoristes, ce diocèse, chère Excellence, bénéficiera de votre expérience en tant que supérieur de la communauté rédemptoriste au Canada et du supérieur général de cette même communauté à l'échelle mondiale. Let the words of Saint Ignatius of Antioch to his brother Bishop Polycarp, which we read in the Office of Readings only a few short weeks ago, be a source of encouragement and support as you commence your Episcopal ministry. I quote, Justify your Episcopal dignity by your unceasing concern for the spiritual and temporal welfare of your flock. Let unity, the greatest of all goods, be your preoccupation. Carry the burdens of all men as, as the Lord carries yours. Have patience with all in charity. Give yourself to prayer continually Ask for wisdom greater than you now have. Speak to each other individually, following God's example. The great is the toil, the richer the reward. Dear Bishop Michael, relying upon the powerful intercession of Our Lady under her title, Mother of Perpetual Help, whose icon and devotion was entrusted in a special way to the Congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer, as also St. Columkiel, patron of this cathedral church and diocese, may the Church of Pembroke flourish under your pastoral governance. Know that you will have the fraternal support of your brother bishops, 
the collaboration and assistance of the Apostolic Nunciature and the eager and generous cooperation of the clergy, religious and lay faithful, who today have been entrusted to your fatherly and watchful care. Thank you. While you are still sitting, I would like to say just a few words. Since early this morning began, the one word that has been in my heart is gratitude. Thanks to God, who called me to come here to Pembroke, which I had never visited before the nomination came. But I've heard about you for many, many, many years. Gratitude to the Holy Father, Pope Francis, successor of St. Peter, chosen by Jesus to be the rock on which our church is established for his leadership, his sensitivity to people, to transform our world into a place where, as he says, all are welcome, todos, 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 to repeat the words of the Holy Father. Gratitude to the bishops who've come, some at great sacrifice, to be present and to make sure that I know I have their support and welcome. And, and redemptorists who've come from many parts of the world to be here. It's, it's really quite an incredible gift. Gratitude to my family, but that's in the, the program, so I'm not going to say any more to them. Well, I wouldn't get through it otherwise. I was almost not sure I'd get up off the floor, you know, after being there for the litany. <laughs> Fortunately, Father Mike Lund is a hefty bodyguard to lean on. <laughs> Gratitude, thanksgiving. That's the meaning of Eucharist, to give thanks, the action to give thanks. To give thanks in all that we do and all we receive so that it can be shared with others. I want to say a word in English that Monsignor Anton said in French. And he forbade me to say this, but I, I don't have to listen to him anymore because now I'm the bishop. <laughs> but I want to say on behalf of all of us a word of great gratitude to Father Ryan who served as administrator and who has served out of a genuine and deep and authentic love for the diocese, for his brother priests, for the church, for Christ. Words can't express what we'd like to say to you for this past year. But I can't let the words in French, which might escape a few years, go untranslated. I just want to say a brief word about the feast day of the Assumption and Mary. Since I entered religious life, my motto has been the final words of Mary in the Gospel, the wedding feast of Cana, pointing to her son. Do whatever he tells you. Even though some of the priests have been joking with me that that means I want them to do what I tell them, it, it's not like that at all. It's that all of us are called together with her, who is always at the heart of the church, to do whatever he tells us to put it into practice in our lives, to love one another and, and give from really within, to put everything on the line, as she did in the 
beautiful window. The Annunciation reminds us of that. Cette devise est une devise qui doit toucher tous les cœurs du peuple de Dieu et avec Marie pour nous accompagner. Nous pouvons mettre en pratique ce que son Fils nous dit, nous indique. Nous pouvons aller d'où il nous emmène avec joie, avec une joie qui peut transformer ce monde. So please, let us really together, as a diocese, as a family, continue to look to him as the one who gives us hope, who holds us together, who really teaches us what it means to be human in a world that sometimes forgets what that is really all about. Merci. Je vous remercie de mon cœur, de tout cœur. Thank you. God bless you all. More will come later.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down your heads for God's blessing. O God, who care for your people with gentleness and rule them in love, endow them with the spirit of wisdom, those to whom you have handed on authority to govern, that the flourishing of the holy flock may become the eternal joy of its shepherds. Amen. As in your majestic power you allot the number of our days and the measure of our years, look favorably upon our humble service and confer on our time the abundance of your peace. Amen. Give a happy outcome to the tasks that through your grace you have laid upon me and you have raised to the rank of bishop. Make me pleasing to you in the fulfillment of my duties and so guide the hearts of people and pastor that the obedience of the flock may never fail the shepherd, nor the care of the shepherd be lacking for the flock. Amen. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, 